Hello and welcome, I'm Arumba. thank you for joining me, let's play some Offworld Trading Company. So, I've been uh, playing this a little bit solo and also playing a little bit multiplayer, I think it's time to, to give it a, a good old, you know, good old try in uh, solo and just kind of explain what the game is a little bit if you haven't actually had a chance to check the game out. It's a, a new game that's coming out fairly soon, it's in early access right now. Um, I will say that um, based on its current level of development that I, I personally feel like the, the price tag is maybe a little bit high for, for the game as is, but you know, it's maybe kind of the price of being early access. If, if you want to have access to the game now, you can pay a premium for it, I guess. I, I don't know. I don't really know how I feel about that. But whatever. It's a really cool game. So we're, we're going to try it out. We're going to have some fun. We're not going to do the campaign. We're just going to dive in and do some quick plays so I can kind of explain a little bit about how the game works. And then perhaps we'll probably play one of each of the four factions and, uh, you know, give it give it a good old try. So so what do we do? How does this work? We're going to set up a, a normal game. We're going to have a regular... We'll go with... Uh, manager well we'll stand assistant actually just to make sure we don't get so totally horribly beaten to death and we'll play with regular uh three ai players which are actually quite good um they usually win in fact if you play on the higher difficulty settings that's what i found so far so what are we looking at so far well first off this game is um it's it's basically something where you're going to simulate um okay so you are on mars right and you are trying to build your company and buy out all the other companies and you want to do things that make you the most money as possible whether it is buying low and selling high getting a a, um, a what's it called a monopoly on a, on a market or or just getting really good patents and inventions and things that give you a competitive edge over over the competitors and then you buy out their companies and that is how you win so you start off and what you see here right in the center is this is like the town right there's like a neutral town on mars it's basically just there to cause some artificial demand for like water and electricity and you know all that, all that kind of stuff and what we're going to do first is we're going to do some scanning to find a location that we can choose to put down our headquarters whether we want to play as expensive robotic scavenger or scientific so let's go ahead and just do a little bit of scanning high levels of water found high levels of iron found there's a little bit of everything right here around the center found. now they have stated and i don't actually have 100 percent confirmation of this, but that the uh, like the robotic voice is, is a, like a placeholder, and I sure hope that's the case because I'm not particularly thrilled with the the sound. It's interesting, like they've got some some sounds that are actually voice acted, I think, and others that are not. So what we're, what are we looking at so far, right? When you see these little things here, you're seeing the amount of a resource that's in a tile. Notice it's a hex based grid. So this is aluminum, and it's a single it's a low deposit. We've got a high deposit and a medium deposit. This is carbon, a brownish colored looking thing. This is iron. Uh, this is water. And this yellow guy here is silicon. So these are all resources that are going to be used to, to build and, and do whatever we want to do. We'll do a little tiny bit more scanning. Um, we do have no real huge rush to place down. So there's kind of like a, an opportunity cost type thing. Like if we place down our colony first, then we get maybe the best pick. But if we pick place down our colony last, we get an extra claim, which, as we'll see very soon, claims are very important. So, I'm kind of of the impression that it's it's better to scan more, but I know some some people probably like to throw things down like right away. Every couple seconds, we're getting an extra extra scan available. These things are are resources that we haven't yet identified. So, tons of iron, tons of aluminum, um, a geo geothermal vent. Yep. So we can see here one of the AIs is settled right here. Um, so they've chosen to play a scientific. We'll talk about what those different types are in a moment. This is probably another geothermal. Yep. The geothermal power is very powerful. Expansive colony founded. Okay, an expansive. expansive. Colony expanded. Wow, expansive. He upgraded right away. Again, that's something else we're going to talk about when we get there. So he decided to settle here. Uh, we're going to go. We're going to go last. Founded. So we have two science, two scientifics, and a expansive. So let's talk about the different types of colony. Um, expansive colonies get extra claims for each headquarter upgrade, and you can upgrade your colony from level 1 to level 5, so that's an extra 4 claims just for being expansive. Um, as the name implies, you have lots of expansion, you can put down a lot of claims. You need 50% less steel for buildings and headquarter upgrades, and the base resource you use to do those upgrades is steel. Steel comes from taking iron and turning it into steel. Robotic does not rely on food, water, or oxygen, but does use electronics instead. You, you're essentially robots, right? Also, the headquarters does not require glass for upgrading, which makes sense because you're robots, you don't need glass, you don't need, you know, windows, you don't need to have any kind of oxygen or any of that nonsense, so it's kind of cool. Also, units use power instead of fuel. 
Okay. Extra bonuses for uh, resources that are collected under the HQ. If you place down a, uh, a headquarters on top of a resource, notice how it says right above the 100% bonus, 180 silicon. Whereas with expansive, uh, or maybe somebody that could actually fit there, 180 versus 90. So you get double for placing down on tiles. When you do that, you're actually ruining the tile um, for, for the future. Let me get these last couple scans done. We have them, we might as well, right? The game's still paused. It's like tactical strategy right here, turn-based pausing. Uh, anyway, and Scavenger can use the black market more frequently, learns about new news events before other headquarter types. And the base resource is carbon, so this is important. Um, they do not use steel, and there are no current players on the map that are playing as as, uh, as Scavenger, so... Carbon is um, pretty much mostly just going to be used by them, although it is used for some other things. Scientific buildings built over resources will use those resources as an input. 50% increased research speed on technologies and patents, and when they're targeted by the black market, sabotage damage is reduced by 50%. They use steel as a base resource. So they all kind of have their own unique playstyle. Expansive is like build lots and lots of stuff. Robotic is about um, minimizing the amount of like extra stuff that you have. You're very focused. You only need steel, and you really don't need much else. Steel and, and electronics, and it's very simple. Scavenger is just weird. You get a lot of black market, lots of like uh, cloak and daggery type stuff. And then scientific, you are immune to most black magic, like trickery and black market type stuff. But you um, you have very few claims, so you don't get very much space, and you have you have all of the requirements of an expansive colony, um, like food and water and electricity and all that stuff. But you don't actually get the bonus claims. So there's you know advantages and disadvantages, disadvantages to each. I think for this map, since we've got two people who are scientific, playing as a scavenger wouldn't be that great, simply because they'd be hard to, to use uh, the black market against. Um, I'm actually going to play as a robot, since uh, there are no robots, and robots are awesome. So we're going to want to be near a whole bunch of iron, preferably. Uh, we don't really care about water, because the water is... Uh, we don't need water. Um, and we are going to care about some silicon and stuff. Could we maybe settle over here? Why don't we settle over nearby this guy? There's iron, iron here. We do want silicon, we do want um, aluminum, and yeah, there's a ton of iron over here, but I think we're going to settle over here. So we're going to pick our spot, we're going to go like this. You can't place it right top, on top of a geothermal, it'd be awesome if you could. But um, we do get a double bonus for putting stuff down. I think we'll actually consume all of the silicon, just to deplete the amount of it, of it that's available on the map. And uh, it seems fine to me. It would be nice to be adjacent to that, but if we don't take advantage of our double bonus, we're kind of missing out. In fact, why don't we go for, uh, can't rotate our structure. We'll just take a whole bunch of silicon. Alright, so we're eight minutes in and I have, nah, <laughs> just now, shut up, dude, I'm trying to talk. Um, we're just now starting to play and of course now the music turns off. One of my minor complaints about the game is that for whatever reason the music does not, doesn't play on repeat. So, after you've gone through one time in the soundtrack, it just stops making music for the rest of the thing. So it's going to be a little bit quiet. So, we have five whole claims. Partially because we're playing on um, the lower level difficulty. We're on assistant, so we get a bonus claim. And then because we were the last colony, we uh, we got an extra as well. So normally we would only get three, but we get five. So that's special. So what's a claim? Well, a claim basically allows you to stake out and say, okay, that hex is mine. And as far as I know, there's no way to actually lose control of a hex ever after you've claimed it. And you're not going to get too many of these. Maybe 20. Maybe maybe 25 in a long game at the big map or something, but you've got to be pretty cautious about which ones you pick. So, for instance, what we're going to want, in order to actually do our upgrades, we're going to need to make some steel, and we need aluminum. So the very first thing we're going to do is pick out an aluminum deposit. Um, this one's going to be the, the nearest and strongest one. We can go for that. So we're going to put down a mine. Uh, we're also going to want to get a little bit of steel going, so we're going to want to get some iron. I have a feeling he's probably going to try to take that iron deposit, but we'll try for it anyway. And the other thing we're going to want is, because we use power instead of fuel, we're going to want lots of power. Wouldn't it be terrible to get a geothermal? I don't know if we can actually afford that quite yet. Um, actually, we could. It would cost pretty much every single dollar we have. We'd have to buy all the extra steel and buy a little bit of extra aluminum. But we would get two power per second. Um, I'm not sure we're going to do that yet, though. I think I'd rather just build a steel mill. And that will take... Nope. Oh, look at that. What, what are you doing? Why'd you take this one? Instead of the level 3. Well, I guess that's fine. Whatever you want. So, we've got uh, the red enemy here, Mrs. Launch. We've got Mr. Balanced, and we've got Mrs. Research. This kind of cues you into the AI personality, like how they're going to play. 
Uh, Mrs. Launch is going to try to launch goods into space to get a whole bunch of money. Mr. Balance is balanced. Mrs. Research is going to try to do a bunch of research. Um, we still have two more claims available. And here we can see things like, okay, these are the different resources that are available. This is how many we currently have. This is the interface you use to purchase or sell them. And this is the current price. Now, this is a supply and demand type market. So if there are a whole bunch of people using power and very few people generating power, every time someone buys power on the market, the price of power goes up. So it's very risky to um, rely on others for, for producing things. It can cause them to have a monopoly over you and uh, really screw you. Like if I, let's just say I had a, a monopoly on the power market and I just decided to stop selling it to my competitors, they could just go bankrupt because they would just have no money, uh, no power at all. And the price of power would skyrocket because there's none available. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna go for like self-sufficiency type thing. I think we're gonna wanna get an aluminum mine. Now, notice how like, okay, I placed this one that's it's distant from our, our capital or our headquarters. That doesn't really matter, however, what will happen is every time we get the iron produced, it's going to fly from there to our headquarters. And it's going to send like a little boat, or like a little ship. It's going to bring the stuff over there. A boat wouldn't make sense. There's no water. Don't ask me why I said boat. But um, that costs power, right? In, in the case of, of our headquarters, since we're playing as robotic. If it was any other type, it would use fuel. Um, but again, because we're robotic, we use power instead of fuel. So, um... However, if you build stuff that's directly adjacent to your headquarters, then because it's connected, you don't actually have to send or ship any material that way. So what we can do is we can actually just get some silicon mining. Oh, we actually have a nice stockpile of silicon, so we don't really need to do that. But we can, we can do an adjacent mine, which might not be as efficient as, say, this one, but it would give us the stuff directly, like, as it's mined. But since we've already got one, I don't think we need to do it quite yet. So don't worry, don't worry. Gameplay will speed up here soon. Um... We're just going to kind of hold off on it for a second. So right now we can see iron is worth $14 per unit. Um, steel is worth $61. Our, iron, uh, our steel mill cannot function because it doesn't have any iron. So since the price of iron is less than a quarter of the price of steel, pretty much makes sense to convert iron into steel. So even though we don't, you know, we have our own iron mine, I'm actually going to buy a couple units of iron just to get this thing started. The black market is we just generated iron. five steel which is good. We'll keep on buying it as long as the price makes sense. Somebody's built a wind turbine. These are the different types of power. We can make solar panels, wind turbines, we can make geothermal plants. Geothermals produce the absolute most power, but they're also very obvious targets for the black market. We do have the black market online, which um, allows us to do things that are kind of, you know, questionable. We can take a claim. The Planetary UN rewards claims to companies that brings colonists to Mars. They reward claims to companies that give them big stacks of money under the table, too. This just gives us one extra claim. Um, every time somebody uses this feature on the black market, the price goes up. So you want to do it early and often and as, and as often as you can. That's the same for all of them. EMP. It's a harsh bummer to all electronic equipment, causing buildings to malfunction for a while and people to look up from their computers for once. Power surge. Um, it's kind of like an EMP, but it works in a, in a line, in a string. Underground nuke will destroy the value of a, of a tile, so if it's got one level of deposit, it'll knock it down by one, and it seems to me like if it's level three, it knocks it down to one. Dynamite just destroys the building. It doesn't do anything to the actual underground, the, the resources on the tile. A mutiny, a mutiny actually gives you control of the tile for up to 120 seconds. Um, only 60 if you target someone who is scientific, because they have 50% immunity to it. So we're probably not going to do a lot, of, a lot of immunity, or sorry, a lot of mutinies unless we are targeting Mrs. Launch. And then finally, the Goon Squad will protect a tile from enemy sabotage. If targeted, you will capture the sabotage for yourself. Very good to play defensively from my experience. So what we're probably going to do is we're going to go for the geothermal, and then we're going to put a Goon Squad on it. I'm just trying to debate if I should maybe be, maybe get this claim since it's available, we have the money, and it's rare. Um, I think we might actually do that. Oh, well, that's going to slow down our ability to actually get this geothermal, because we need more steel. Since we have the extra claim, why don't we go ahead and build a extra steel mill. Now, this is where something really cool starts to happen. Notice how we get a 50% bonus? So, if you build things that are adjacent and they produce the same goods, you get bonuses. So, like, go down to this aluminum. If I were to just, like, mine some aluminum, right, we get 1.5, we get 1. Um, this one's right now producing 2 because it's level it's a level 3 high resource but if we put it here we get a 50% bonus so now all of a sudden we're getting 2.25 which will also make this one make 3 and so adjacency is cool but it ex kind of exposes you to some of that risk of 
of a purchased uh, of an EMP or a power surge. So the thing I love about this game is it's got this really good balance between um, it's game theory. You know, it's rock paper scissors. It's like, do I build things close together to get the bonuses, but then be more susceptible to attacks, or do I spread them out for security, but then not make as much? Like, how how competitive do I really need to be? So anyway, what we're gonna do, we're gonna build the steel mill here, so we get the adjacency bonus, but also we want to be adjacent to the power thing. Not that power really needs to be shipped at all, but there are potential bonuses we can get. Patents that will give us a double production bonus if it's connected to the capital. So we're going to build that there. Get some more steel being made. Um, we do have enough iron coming in, I think. You know what, actually, with a steel mill? Yeah, we do. We have just enough iron coming in that we'll be able to run two steel mills. Uh, which is great. We'll buy a little tiny bit more. And steel is the main thing slowing us down from getting our next upgrade, which will give us a bunch more claims. We'll get four more claims. And it will increase the rate that we consume electronics. Again, we're robots, so this is kind of like the food that we're buying. So, we got that second thing going there. Um, what's it going to take to actually build this? A bunch of steel. Or we could use cash to buy the steel off the market. Uh, we don't really want to do that. Um, one thing I will do, even though we don't use water, is I'm going to buy some while it's cheap. Uh, like 50 units of water, like 50 units of food, just as an investment for the future. Because I'm pretty confident this stuff's going to go up in price. Somebody is... interesting. Um, there is a geothermal being auctioned. This is a, a specific tile. You get this tile, not any others. It's not a claim. It's just saying well, you can have this one tile. So we will bid that. And that's fine. Okay. We just want to kind of up the price. I don't want to pay 8000 for something at this point. We don't have that much money. But we do want to build on this one, hopefully before anyone else can. In fact, what we could do is if you use the C key, you can actually claim something before you have the money or the resources to build it. So we've just taken this tile, even though we don't have a geothermal on it. That is now my tile for the rest of the game. So, um, yep, a little bit more steel. We're producing 1.5 per second. So it's not going to take too long to actually build, a, build this geothermal. I think rather than building it um, with our available funds, we're going to wait until we actually have enough steel. Alternatively, we could do the upgrade right now. It would be kind of nice. Um, I think I'm also going to buy up a little bit more of this iron. We're producing quite a bit of aluminum and we're not actually using much yet. So let's sell a little bit. Black market's online, so we want to buy the goon squad next, I think. We're going to sell some, sil some silicon. Buy the goon squad. And as soon as we have enough money here... Or we have enough steel, rather. We'll go ahead and build our first geothermal plant. Which is good, because right now we're losing 23 ducats, or dollars, dollars, per second, because we don't have any power generation. Normally what that's doing is it'll take from your... it'll take from debt. There's a difference between funds and debt. Debt is, um... it accrues interest every night at uh, midnight. 10% interest. But, you know, like, you buy things off the market with your funds, if you need to buy power though, it goes to debt, it's, it's kind of squirrely, you know, it's fine. Anyway, we're gonna build the geothermal. And then what we're gonna do is immediately defend it with a goon squad because it almost always gets attacked. People are jerks and they don't like it when you have a high value structure. This thing's very expensive, it's worth like 12, 13,000 or more. Um, and it's also produ producing two power per second, which is worth 60. It's a lot. So we're gonna protect it because people are jerks and we don't want to let them stop us. So we need another 50 or so steel. And Mrs. Launch was already targeted by a power surge. There goes her water production. Actually, uh, yep. So she's got two water pumps here, producing quite a bit of water. She's got the adjacency bonus. Power surge just shut them down for two minutes. So, that's unfortunate for her. Let's see. Um, but glass is worth a fair bit, but we don't actually use it for much. Although glass, I believe, is a... You know what? No, glass is... Glass is used to build the electronics factory, but it's not actually a component. And now we're producing power. We're producing 1.1 surplus, which is genera generating us 41 um, dollars or the ducats glass, per second. That's going to go towards debt first, and then once the debt's paid off, it's going to go towards our actual spendable funds. So, price of power is fairly decent right now. I've, I've seen it go as high as like 500. It can get really, really high. But uh, we're paying off some debt, which is good. Next thing we want to do, I think, is actually do the upgrade. Improving efficiency. And... Beginning construction. Reticulating splines. <laughs> Reticulating splines. We'll buy a little bit of water because it's so damn cheap and there's no reason not to have a little stockpile of it. We could sell our steel, but that's kind of necessary for upgrades. More steel production would be nice, but it's also kind of putting a lot of our eggs in one basket. Let's go for it, though. We'll go for one more steel mill. 
We're going to need some more iron if we're going to do that. We will go ahead and put another mine over here. And we're also going to need some... Do we need carbon? I think not. Silicon, though, we do need. We've got a tiny bit that's adjacent. You can always find material just by clicking on it over here. It'll cycle through the different locations that are still yet available. So there's tons of silicon available on the map. Silicon's not actually that expensive yet. There's one deposit up here that's quite good. Let's go ahead and mine that. Um, it's going to require just a little bit of money to be able to build that mine, because it takes steel. Let's wait till we have it. Alright, we'll go ahead and start mining that, even while it's fairly cheap. A lot of these commodities or these resources become more expensive later on in the game because they are used in more advanced constructions. Like, in the very beginning, it's it's iron and steel and, and aluminum and carbon. But then later on, it becomes chemicals and silicon and glass. And then it becomes water and food and, and O2. Because it's just, just like a cycle that happens throughout the game. So we've already been going for about 20 minutes. Normally, I'd like to do like a one full-on, like, complete video. But I'm actually going to take a break here. Um, and in the next video, we will hopefully have music again. Probably not. But uh, we'll continue this campaign, or this map, and uh, hopefully we'll win. So, cool. If you like videos like this, you want to see more um, Off-World Trading Company, then please do click the like button, or make a comment, or send it to your friends, whatever you want to do. Or don't, it's fine, whatever you want, but uh, it does help me out quite a bit, so I appreciate it, and I do look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks for watching, everyone. See you soon.